It's been about two hours and um, the silicone has set pretty wonderfully except for this area where the air bubble kept coming up. And we have a little air bubble right under there. What I'm going to work on now is turning this entire mold over. And to do that, I need to lift the hot glue from the work board. And this is going a little better than I thought it would. This is simply another steel modeling tool. This is a Jonas modeling tool. And it's getting under there pretty well. I'm going to go and just lift, here we go, that went smoother than I planned or could have hoped for. Now, we turn it over and we can pull away this hot glue from the mold box. If this comes away, this is, oh, this is coming, oh, okay. You know, every now and again, even when in the face of something unfortunate happening, like that air bubble creeping in, you get something like the hot glue coming away from the wood, which is, that's a big hip hip hooray. <laughs> Maybe it's coming away, I don't know. I'll try and work it away. This wood has been treated with spray release agents and whatnot so it's pretty good about release well except for here it's taking part of the wood we can come in with a um, box cutter knife and just a utility knife and trim that away uh, same thing on this side just loosen it up a bit and make it come away make it go away Okay, well that's not going anywhere. I'm going to take the rubber band off at this point. And I'm going to pick the clay out from the first part. If I can leave the box intact, that would be great. Because then I will, I will not have to reassemble it and re-glue it. Now I'm pulling up that, remember the, the clay was rolled out, these two sections were rolled out and then they were joined together and they were joined on top of the other section of clay. So here is the bottom and here is where the silicone completely seeped under the skull. What I'm going to do now, I have no idea. I did not expect to see this. I did not expect this. Well, gang, you're seeing the results of a mold gone bad right along with me. Ew. I'm not pleased. I'm not pleased. I'm pretty disappointed, in fact. This did not go as I had hoped. I don't know why this happened, how this got through. I really couldn't say. We're just going to keep going and going and going and removing all this clay. All right. It's not ruined. It's not ruined. I don't think so. I hope not. Jeez, I hope not. <laughs> well, all right. Methinks this is going to have to be cut away from this lower portion. I'm just scratching my head here right now trying to figure out how in the heck and where in the heck this seeped through. This is so bizarre. I can't tell you how strange this is. Yeah, this is the first time this has happened. So let me pull all the clay off of the silicone that seeped through. That's the most important thing. Let me separate the clay 
from the silicone, the wheat from the chaff, as it were. Now, this is not the way you want to mold a two-part skull mold. <laughs> I must say, this is... I, you know, the funniest thing is it's coming apart from my demarcation lines, though. I don't know where this came through. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Let me get a little zoom in here, and we I think we can show where this leaked in. Remember I said it was coming up from the eye socket. No, not exactly. It came through the bottom here someplace. Okay? And it has leaked through, as you can see, it has leaked through somehow. Now what I'm going to do, rather, rather, than, rather than tear the silicone, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get a sharp scalpel and I'm going to cut that free and then I'm going to trim up the rest of it just to make sure that it's neat and pretty. Okay. And you can see where this is hanging on here, right? I'm going to go ahead and slice through. This is a brand new sharp scalpel blade. I'm just going to cut this free. Free, free, cut it free. I'll tell you, the surface of the mold portion is very nicely smooth and glassy, shiny, and now it's time for more surgical procedures. Surgical procedures with Papa John. Now, I'm going to grab some of this excess silicone that's through the bottom here and just excise this. Okay, now I can tell by the by the color variation here. This is more silicone and clay. But I can tell by this blue color. You see this right here. This blue coloration. That tells me that the silicone has seeped into the skull at this point. And we have another little area that needs to be removed. That's this over the front incisors. It's as though they've been capped. <laughs> and let me cut along the base. Free this up. And I think I can just... And pry that loose, yeah. Now, see a little shininess here. It's a little shininess happening right here. And by the feel of it, that's some silicone that's gone through. Everything else is fine. Uh... We had a little bit of sil silicone seep through. I'm just going to go ahead and cut this away. I'll not worry too much about where it is on the inside of the skull until I demold the top. Then I'll start concerning myself with, oh geez, I have to cut it, I have to cut it through. But for now, I just want to get this off the surface, like so, just like so, there we go, I want to expose the clay that was in there, I guess next time I'll use oil based clay, it appears that the drying of the water based clay pulled away enough and allowed for some seepage of silicone. And get it off the teeth. At the gum line, it's real thin, so it's just pulling away. Right, it's pulling away right at the mold lines. So, I don't think we have a worry as far as it's staying where I don't want it. This is, no, this, this actually, 
this portion right here actually leaked through the bone and down and out the root of the teeth. It actually came through the bone this way. See, because it didn't come up to the tooth line on this side, nor on this side. It's a really well-made, well-marked-off mold. I mean, there's no doubt about that. There's some more clay coming out. This is oil-based clay coming off. Okay, all right. Well, let's go ahead and finish prepping out this mold. Um, the, the other things that need to be done is these wooden corner keys here need to be removed. And the best way to do that is I get, let me clean the clay off my modeling tool. There we are. I get in like so and I just pop them out. Now there's no, I don't see any air bubbles in here or under the lip, the top of that, that mushroom-like top on these little nubbins here. Let me get another one. Real easy, get in there. The curve tip of this modeling tool makes this so much easier. Just simply go in. It does it without cutting the silicone. It goes under and then you can simply pop it out and then lift it out. And we do this on all four corners. All of the other keys and uh, little dimples, I was calling them divots early, they're divots now. Before, when they were being pushed into the clay, they were dimples. But all of these are fine. Uh, this one, okay, this one ended up shifting and is a little on the crooked side, but it doesn't matter because it will, st it will still lock. It will still lock in place. Okay. I think now for the rest of the details, such as the opening for the ear canal on the, on the tympanic boule, let's see if I can get this on camera so you can see. This detail right here, you can see how the clay has has dried and pulled away from the bone. Um, it, it's done that on all of the openings. This is a real serious water-based clay. What I'm planning on doing before pouring up the second side, well, you need to put down a separator. Oh, these are really, really nice little these are great little interlocking keys. I mean, they have some great, great height to them. You can see they have some great height to them. This silicone, I'm so impressed. It is very, very strong. It is very strong. This is going to be good silicone for this mold. Okay, now I have some cleaning up to do in this mold. There's little bits of oil-based clay that needs to be picked out. And I need to go over that and do that. It's coming off really easily. But one of the, the thing that I use as a separator uh, to keep the silicone from sticking to itself, I use a mixture I made up of, where is it? Here it is. I use a mixture of Vaseline and mineral spirits real thin. This is real thin stuff. Um, and I brush this on and quite often as I brush this onto the silicone surface any residual clay that's still adhering will come away with a brush. And just let me show you how thin this is before I go on any further. This is super snotty stuff. <laughs> See how thin this is. This is nothing more than Vaseline mixed well with mineral spirits.
I'm going to go ahead and clean this up. And the, the methods for cleaning it up, oh, I'm going to use a, little bits of paper towel, not a whole sheet, little bits torn off like so. Just like so. And I'm going to use the Mineral Spirits Vaseline mixture to help me get in there and lift the excess clay out and just wipe it away. Sticks, it sticks to the brush, the bristles of the brush with the mixture on it. What I'm also going to use this for, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to apply this to all of the areas, all of the areas where, where the water-based clay dried and pulled away from the skull. I'm going to use this as my separator on the skull. If you press it in enough, it'll help fill in any other gaps. There are also some broken areas on the skull I'm noticing that I didn't see before. There are some cracks and whatnot where it was quite easy for the silicone to seep in. Right here, for example, <clears throat> the inside of the tympanic boule has been crushed, or crunched somehow. I don't know if that happened when I pressed it into the bed of clay. It's quite possible that it did. But you can see the Vaseline really does fill that opening in. And believe it or not, that will be enough to act as a dam to keep silicone from getting in. Um, you can also use straight Vaseline right out of the container and apply it with the tip of a modeling tool. There's just regular full strength or full viscosity Vaseline. You can pick it up with the, modeling, the tip of a modeling tool, okay, like so. And these areas where the clay has pulled away can very easily be filled and mended. And the Vaseline is not going anywhere. Plus, it's a real good separator to use on silicone, for sil with silicone. Uh, the other areas here under the roof of the mouth. In the first place, silicone seeped through there, so you do want to get some Vaseline there. And I can just put a heavy glob of it on and then work it over with a brush. There are also other little tiny cracks in the bone. I noticed where it looks like some silicone is just beneath the surface of the bone or right there at the cracks on the surface. So to keep anything from happening that I don't want to happen, I'm simply going to use the vas thin Vaseline and the regular strength Vaseline. And I'm going to work this around. Now here's more silicone on this canine. Well, it just came right off. That just now came right off. Say so brushing the silicone, the um, Vaseline on is showing me some areas where there is silicone on the teeth and on the bones that I didn't catch before. More little little bits, more little films of it. All right, let's try the modeling tool. I was getting with the fingers and wipe that off. There we go. Here we go. Here we come. Yep. Yep. There's a little tiny, little tiny bit of silicone right on the tip of my finger. Right there. Isn't that crummy? 
All right, it's a silicone crumb. Okay. Huh. And we're going to just go over this using the vessel. And like I said, it, it lets you see wherever the silicone. Ah, you know what it is? I'm noticing the teeth are just a little loose in the skull. And sure, remember I said how sneaky silicone was, that it, if, if it was possible for it to do it, it would get into any little opening? I was serious. I'm not kidding. Here's proof positive as to what can happen with it. Now we're going to go around all of the teeth openings, the sockets I should say, including the incisors, and I'm going to give a heavy coat of Vaseline in there, as well as putting it on the silicone itself. I'm sorry if my hand keeps blocking what I'm doing, but uh, they're the only hands I have, and it's the only way I know how to work a a little brush, a paintbrush, is in my hands. But I'm going to go over, for instance, the roots of the teeth, all of the teeth, and I'm going to do this very carefully and very thoroughly. Um, you could see what I'm doing, so you have an idea of what's happening right now. I'm going over the bones. I'm making sure. I'm going to clean up any little bit of silicone that I find that has possibly wrapped itself around a bone. I'm going to continue to do this, and I'm going to get this all done off camera. And when we come back, I'll have uh, all of the silicone that I need for the next pour weighed and mixed out and, and ready, to, ready to pour in. Um, like I say, this mistake, it happened, but that doesn't change the fact of the way the work is done. You still have to weigh both A and B. Um, you still have to figure out the amount that you will need. I may go a little less on this one. No, not really. Let me let me check something real quick. If you never, if you're not sure about the the um, the space you have for canine teeth that they're not too close to the bottom, this is how you do it. You lay just a, a thin piece of wood across the mold at that point, and then you can tell how much room you will have. And here you can see, we have quite a bit of room. So we cover this lower portion of the skull with enough silicone to completely cover the teeth. And the way to do that would be to come right up, right up to the edge of the mold box. And as I said, I'm going to go ahead and continue to apply the Vaseline, both the thinned and the thickened product. I'm going to remove excess clay as I go. Uh, one of the things I'll, I'll show is uh, putting the thin Vaseline separator into these little key locking points at the corners. Show you how I get the separator in there. You go in there with a brush and press down on the brush and then spin that brush and you notice the bristles are going underneath the little ledge that forms the mushroom cap feature of these little wooden buttons. Okay, like so. Then you can take out your excess. And you go around again. Just make sure you cover the whole thing. Make sure you get the excess out. Okay, you don't want to leave anything, you don't want to leave any in there. And I'll be back when I'm ready to pour the second half of the mold. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Bye bonds. All right, second batch of silicone has been mixed. And I'm about to pour it. The clay corners are in place. You know, clay has been used to seal off the corners as the first time. And I'm going to use a nice thin stream 
You pour it from a height. Let it flow into the keys. Let it flow all over the lower portion of the skull. I could only figure out that there were some damaged areas to the skull that allowed the silicone to seep through. All right. I really separated it the best I, I mean, sealed it the best I could from all of this, and it just uh, got away from me. But it doesn't look like it created a lot of problems as far as the lower portion of the skull is concerned. I was able to scrape away any thin film of silicone that I found on other parts of the bones. Um, so it looks like it may be okay. This is the last of those little bottles that you saw at the beginning. This is the very last of it. So to do the lower jaw, I'm going to have to make another purchase of Platzil 7320. It's a good silicone. I've got no problems with the kind of mold it made. It's real. It's a real sturdy silicone. I mean, it seemed to have done a real good job here. And this completely covered the, the incisors as, as high as I wanted them to go. Remember the little trick I did about laying the, the uh, stir stick, the craft stick or tongue depressor over the top to show how much space there was located underneath them. Uh, now, okay, it's just a big old paint stirrer. I think that's going to do it. All right. Take this, toss this paint stirrer away. Wipe off the excess on the edge of this mixing container so it doesn't drip all over the place. Now I bring my, I'll bring my heat lamp over. Put this down over the second half of the mold. Oh, first thing I want to do, I want to spray the Polly's 2500 release agent. I'll spray that over the top and break up, as someone I know would say, break up those little champagne bubbles. And we break up those little champagne bubbles on the surface. And uh, this is real. These are real good products that are sold. These are real, real good products. And now we'll lower the light into place. And let it do its thing. It's... Oh, just about an inch or so over the top, or away from the top of the mold, I should say. <laughs> 